A couple of months ago, I read a book called Getting Things Done, or simply GTD, and I feel like I'm a little late for the party. This productivity system was developed in 2001, and it seems like everybody has already tried it, but not me, unfortunately. I'm usually a very skeptical person in terms of reading different self-help or productivity books, and I think that is why I've been postponing it for so long, and I kind of regret it now. So in this video, I will not give you a full overview of the book and a deep dive because I feel like there is so much content out there, so many articles that summarize the book, so many videos. But what I will do is briefly describe the key processes, the most essential ones, and show you how I personally use the system as someone who is not a CEO, not self-employed, not a full-time YouTube creator, just a pretty much regular person who has to juggle some personal and work-related tasks. There is a beautiful flowchart available for free download on the GTD website and I will of course leave the link down below, but while reading the book I made my own, so I will be using it as my cheat sheet to go through the steps together with you. So the main idea of the GTD is that we live in such a chaotic, stressful world where we get overflown with information and it is just very difficult to organize yourself and make sense of all the information that is coming your way. And this framework aims to help you to feel a little bit less stress and more in control over that constant flow of information that is being thrown at you every single day. So how are we supposed to do this? There are five steps in the system, which are collect, process, organize, review and do. And if you heard about this system before, you might have noticed that there is a bit of an inconsistency in the naming of these components. So usually collect is known as capture or review might be known as reflect, do as engage and process as clarify. I have a pretty old edition of this book, I believe. It's the UK edition. And then I also took the e-learning on LinkedIn Learning. And the terminology was slightly different. Even though the LinkedIn Learning course itself was recorded by David Allen, there are slight differences in terms of language. So just so you know, if I say collect, I mean capture. If I say do, I mean engage. If you see different terminology in other videos or other sources, that's fine. It's still all the same system and it follows exactly the same logic. So the first step is to collect or capture all the information. During this step, we simply collect all the tasks, all the info, all the emails or physical mail that is coming our way. The collection tools can be completely different from a physical collection box or a tray to a notebook where you would write everything down to um, digital collection tools, for example, your inbox and your email or notes in your phone or even the voice recording machines or voice recording apps where you can just record your idea and process it then later. It all depends on what kind of information do you deal with every single day and which ways are the most convenient for you. I try to stick to three collection tools. First of them is the email because I have no choice. I will get email anyway, so it all just lands there. Second one is my planner where I write things down. And the third one is the notes on my phone. So if there is anything, absolutely anything that comes to my mind like, oh, I need to buy slippers or I need to send an email to my thesis promoter, I write it down either in notes on my phone or in my physical planner. I really admire people who can keep all of the information in their head, but if I don't write it down, for me, it does not exist. So I have to write everything down. 
I do not really have a physical collection tool like a box or a tray because this is what I use my planner cover for. So this is a pretty cool cover. It has a lot of pockets on both sides, but also it has this very large pocket right here. As you can see, I have some papers here already. So if I didn't have it, I would probably have like a physical tray on my desk, but this one really saves me a lot of space and also I do not risk forgetting let's say letters or notifications about getting a parcel when I'm going to the post office because I just have a habit to keep everything in this cover. So it really doesn't matter what kind of collection tools you use. I think that the key idea here and the focus is on using something that you can create your habit around. So you have one, two, three, five, doesn't matter how many dedicated spaces and you know that only in those spaces all of the information, all of the inbox, all of, all of the things that are coming your way are being stored. And of course these tools have to be adjusted to your lifestyle, to the type of work you do or the studies you have or personal goals, any kind of day-to-day -day things, day-to-day -day tasks that you're involved in. After we have collected all the information, we need to process it and then organize it. I will combine these two steps because for me it kind of makes sense. I believe that they're intertwined and what I usually do is when I get the piece of information and I start processing it, at the same time I organize it into a certain list or into a calendar it depends on the kind of information I receive. So I will be talking about those two at the same time. When you process information, your main question that you ask yourself according to the system is, is it actionable? Is there anything I have to do or I can do about this? And not everything is actionable, of course. So the answer to this question can be yes and no. And if it's yes, we have some options here. The first option is to complete it immediately if it takes less than two minutes. Second is to delegate it if we can, or we can defer it and deal with it later. The first option, I guess, is clear. If you think of some task that takes less than two or three or five minutes, you can come up with your own time limit. You just do it. You don't write it down anywhere. Or if you see it written down and it's been written down in your long to-do list for three weeks, probably you can just do it. One of the examples is to send a message to a friend or check the weather or something like this, something that is really, really fast. And I also am trying to create this habit of not spending too much time on emails. So if this is an email that I have to answer and I think that it's not going to take such a long time, I just answer it immediately. I don't sit down and try to compose the best piece of writing I can, so it really depends on what kind of task it is, but I'm trying to make sure to notice all of these very small tasks and do them straight away. Because if you don't, they pile up and you have this very, very long list that for me at least is intimidating and overwhelming. The second option that we have is to delegate it. So you might ask someone else to do it. I think it's more relevant to work-related tasks, but also sometimes we can delegate our personal tasks or home-related tasks. If you live with your family, your partner, your friend, and you suddenly remember that you need to buy, well, let's say toilet paper, you can just send the message to them and ask them to do it. So you might find yourself in a situation when it is more convenient to delegate a task like that. For example, if you know that that person is somewhere around a supermarket. Here is when the organized step comes in play because all of those things that you've delegated, you later would organize into a list called waiting for. Those are your parcels that you're waiting for, the tasks that you delegated, anything that requires an action from another person. So then later you can start doing something that you must do about this task. But we'll get back to the organization a bit later. 
So if you cannot delegate it, if you cannot complete it quickly, you defer it, which means that you put it somewhere to later get back to completing that task. If it is urgent, it will go into your to-do list. And if it's something that has to be completed on a specific date or it can just wait for another day, it goes into your calendar. There is one important thing to mention here that according to the book, when you decide to add something to your to-do list, you don't just say go shopping or uh, organize a party or write my thesis because this is not a specific task. And when you look at it, especially the last one, write my thesis, it looks very big and overwhelming. So what the author suggests us doing is to break it down into smaller actions. I'm sure you've heard about this technique before, but include only the next physical action that you're going to do. Some of your tasks can be pretty straightforward. Buy tomatoes. You buy tomatoes. You go to the supermarket and buy tomatoes. That task has only one action, one component. But tasks like, let's say, film a video for YouTube. My next physical action, after I have an idea about a video, would be write a script. Or if I don't have a script, I don't have scripts for all of my videos, for flip throughs, for example, I don't, is sit down and film, right? But that's not it, because later we have other steps. I need to edit, I need to also make the thumbnail, I need to upload it. So all of those steps, they come together. And instead of writing film a video or post a video, I would write my next physical action, such as write a script, for example. Same for the thesis. My next physical action is not write a thesis or even work on my thesis. It would be something like check the articles in the library or find 20 relevant articles or something like that. But where do you put these next actions? If you put them into one long to-do list, again, it can be very overwhelming. So David Allen suggests us to organize them either by category, for example, home, school, work, friends, or by projects. Organizing by category is quite easy. You can color code, you can add little flags or tags to your emails or notes, that is clear. But what about the projects? Project in DDD is defined as any task that requires more than one step. So it can be a work-related or school-related project, but also organizing a party can be a project because it includes so many steps. So your next physical action would probably be not organize a party, but let's say message all the guests or even before that create a guest list. Then you have to think about a menu. Then you might have to check some decorations. If it's not at home, you might have to book a venue. So all of these tasks together, they result into the completion of one big project, organization of a party. So for me, if the projects are short and repetitive, I would include them into my regular everyday to-do list. But if they're not, if they're slightly bigger, I would have a separate to-do list for every project. And yes, it can be a little overwhelming, but this is something that helps me and at least I know where to find my next steps. Usually I do it in notes or in my planner. Again, depends on whether this project is short-term or long-term. Something short-term goes into the notes because I can delete it as I complete the steps. Something long-term, something that I would like to keep track of goes into my planner. So to sum up, if we answer yes to the question, is it actionable? We have the following options. Do it right now if it takes two, three minutes, delegate it and put it in our waiting for list or defer it and put it either in a calendar or in your to-do list or in your project to-do list, whatever you choose. But what if the answer is no? It's not actionable. I don't really have to do anything about it. Here we also have three options. So the first option is to trash it. And it might be obvious for a lot of you, but for me personally, 
it was quite difficult. So I tend to keep a lot of emails, I tend to keep um, different, different pieces of information, different notes that actually do not really mean anything, do not require any action. Another option is to put it in something that in the book called Someday Maybe List. And those are my longest lists, all the courses that I want to complete, all the movies that I want to watch, books that I want to read. All of these things go onto my someday maybe list. So I've already mentioned that I use my notes. So this is my short term someday maybe. This is my inbox that later will be organized. It's the to buy section. Yeah, it's not urgent. It's one day. It's the recipes that I want to look up, it's some ideas for the videos that I write down, and all of my inbox on Someday Maybe actually goes here. Then, once in a while, it really does not happen that often, maybe once a month, I also try to organize that list into um, some other sources. So, for example, all the books that I want to read, they later go into my want to read list on Goodreads. And, of course, it doesn't uh, make sense to keep the list twice in Goodreads and in Notes. All the movies go into my IMDb. And all the um, other things, they kind of go into this one day list in Notion that actually I'm thinking about moving to my notes because I don't want to have that much software. So um, sometimes I also write these things somewhere on a sticky note and put it in my planner just because I want to have it in front of me and to keep as a reminder for example the typing course from typing club it's pretty pretty cool it's free and I really feel the need to finish it because I've started it it's actually very fun so I um, keep it here but then occasionally I write it on my post-it note and put it into my planner I have this one here and also I have the list called to buy and try in my notion and these are some health and makeup products that I occasionally come across and I just save them all here. And yeah, this is what my someday maybe lists look like with all the things that I hope to do one day, but it's not urgent at all. The third option is the reference list. Those are pieces of information that you might need one day. Those would be recipes, addresses of restaurants, maybe phone numbers of some maintenance services that you might need, train schedules. Any information like that, for me, it all is being dumped into one long um, note on my phone. And I think this just makes it a little bit easier, even though it is not very organized. But I know that I can just search and I can find whatever information I actually need. But I rarely need it, to be honest. If you're not new to my channel, you know that I make a lot of planner videos and I love paper planning. So why doesn't it go into my paper planner? Well, a lot of these things are or might be not relevant this year. And I feel like it's such a waste of time and paper to rewrite it every single year for one, from one planner to another. So I would prefer to store them somewhere online and then whatever would be relevant that week months or year i would write down into my physical planner i guess it makes sense so to sum up if the answer to the question is it actionable is no there are also three options you trash it throw it away you put it on to your someday maybe list one day i will i will finish this typing course and you also can put it on your reference list to later check it out if you need it. So after we processed and organized our tasks, we should start doing them, actually. And there are a couple of frameworks that are mentioned in the book about how you should choose what kind of task you should do first and so on. For example, the author suggests to consider context, time and the amount of energy that you have or just simply complete the most important task first. And that is what I usually do. So if I have this one big important task that I plan to complete during the day, I usually would start with 
that one. But sometimes I start with shorter, easier tasks just to give myself that feeling of accomplishment that, oh, it's only 9 or 10 a.m. and I've already done something and I can check that box. But it is quite a dangerous strategy because sometimes I get stuck in this madness of very, very short tasks that I keep completing and I'm not actually moving towards the big task that I need to do, which is a big mistake and I usually feel very bad at the end of the day. The last step in GTD is reviewing or reflecting. What I do usually, I do a daily reflection and a daily planning and you can choose the way you want to do it because I know that people are very different. For example, for me, it really works well when I get all of my planning done, all of my reflection, I go through all of my lists and projects and whatnot in the evening. So then the next day when I wake up, I open my eyes and I don't feel stressed about organizing myself. I already know what I expect from this day. I know what kind of tasks are the most important and I feel kind of more um, motivated even at times. But I had a colleague who told me that this is the worst thing for her because she prefers to do everything in the morning. For her, she is so tired at the end of the day that planning and reviewing feels like a chore. So she prefers to wake up earlier, have the dedicated time to planning at the beginning and the start of every single day and just um, it gives her energy and motivation. So I think you can choose whatever feels better for you. For me it's evening planning, for somebody it's morning planning. The most important thing is to have that dedicated time for you to sit down, reflect on what went wrong, what went right, yesterday or last week or last month and write down a quick to-do list and uh, mark maybe priorities or something like that for the next day. So I do reflections like big reflections at the end of every week and at the end of every month that's when I review some of my goals, some of my projects and I think that keeps me organized but of course it's not that perfect I try not to go very hard on myself and that's something that I've struggled with for quite a while if I feel like I, I don't feel like planning or I don't feel like reviewing or I'm sick for example I can just let it go for a couple of days or even weeks and then come back to it later and that's when I'm super grateful for having all these lists because even if I gave up and didn't open my planner didn't open my calendar my notes nothing I come back to that I open all of it and I have lots of information there that I don't have to keep in my head and that's basically it this is the magic system that is supposed to help you create that free, stress-free work environment and help you organize yourself. And even though I quite like it and I utilized quite a few things into my everyday planning and organization, there are quite a few disadvantages. The first one is, I guess, that the system is quite complex. There are too many elements. A lot of people are addressing it online. And I do agree with it if you follow it exactly like it says in the book. For example, there was this one sentence that absolutely scared me. Let me read it for you from the book. You need 43 folders, 31 daily files labeled 1 through 31, and 12 more labeled with the names of the month of the year. The daily files are kept in front beginning with a file for tomorrow's date, if today is October the 5th, then the first file would be six. The succeeding daily files represent the days of the rest of the month. So it might be useful for somebody, but not for me. If I actually tried to do that, I would go absolutely crazy. And no, I absolutely do not need 31 folders. However, if you're somebody who at work gets a lot of physical mail, that would be a perfect organizational plan for you. You would have all of those boxes filled and you would probably find very good use for them, but not me. So I think it is important to adjust the system, this and any other system really, to your own needs, to your own lifestyle and not 
adopt everything all together. If you feel like it's too much, let's start with having a someday maybe list. That's what I did, for example. If I feel like, okay, it's getting better, I can implement more things, all right, probably I should start labeling things and creating those project lists instead of just having one continuous to-do list. Or probably I should start reflecting on my system weekly or monthly. So I guess that it's important to let it go sometimes. I was sick for a couple of weeks, for example, during the summer, and I just ended up with like 30 post-it notes all around my desk, no system, no planner was used, nothing. And yeah, there are days, weeks, maybe even months like that. And I've already mentioned that I struggled a lot with organization. That is why I was absent from YouTube for quite a few months. And it is an important lesson that I've learned a hard way, that it is important to let your perfectionism rest sometimes and just take chunks of whatever is there to adapt them to your own experience and to your own needs. Another disadvantage that I saw people on Reddit pointing out is that not everything can be broken down into smaller chunks and into that one small physical action. And it was discussed especially by people who do a lot of creative work, like artists or writers, because there isn't like a draw a hand when you're drawing a portrait, you know, there isn't um, such a small chunk that you can actually distinguish and put on your list. Sometimes you just have to sit down and work. You sit down and, and draw or, or write or paint. And in this case, there is a trick, I guess, that you can plan how many hours today or tomorrow you want to spend on that activity. So if you cannot measure it, you cannot create that next small physical action, you can just say, okay, I'm planning to draw for two hours or for one hour. And that's good enough, I guess. I also would like to talk about the book itself. I would recommend to read it. It was not one of my favorite books if I get to assess how it's structured and how it's organized. For example, I was really missing the chapter summaries that some other self-help books like Atomic Habits, for example, have. And I find them very useful, especially when reviewing the content. But still, I believe it's a very well-written book, so I would definitely recommended. You can start with those short summaries or with this video, for example, or with other videos. But if you are really into the system and into give it a shot, check it out. I think the book is, um, yeah, it's quite a nice book. So now let me quickly show you how it works in action. Let's start with my email. As I said, I have different flags that I put on my emails when I organize them. And these are homework waiting for someday maybe to do and reference. So when I get an email, I ask myself, should I do something about it? Is it actionable? If yes, and it takes less than two minutes, I do it immediately. So I answer that email, for example, if it's fast. If it's something that I need to do later, it goes into to do. I will not show you because there is some uh, personal data there. And uh, that was the email about my thesis. So it went into to do. It's not an urgent task that I would have to do immediately. But this is something that I would later put in my calendar and assign to a specific day when I have time to work on my thesis. Another folder that I have here that is flagged homework. Um, it's basically a to-do, but because it is specifically my French and German homework, I wanted to keep it in a separate folder. So for me, this is what works. And they have all of those emails here, not only the homework for the next class, because I just want to keep track of topics and tasks that I was given. So that's that. Then if um, there isn't anything that I... Um, can do about it now it goes into someday maybe so here for example I got an email from this I think it's a LinkedIn community uh, for L&D learning and development and this is something that I want to check out one day 
So, of course, I could have just trashed this email and then later when I'm in my LinkedIn, I could have checked it. But I want to keep it here as a reminder. So that is why it's in someday maybe. Then in a reference, I have an email with 25% off for... Um, one of the Etsy shops that I bought from. They have very nice stamps, by the way. So, um, yeah, this is a reference because I don't need it now, but probably if I decide to buy from them again, I will use the code. So that's, that's that. And also I have waiting for, and those are the itinerary. So it's like a temporary folder. It's the trip that we're going uh, to with my friend and also the message about the parcel that I'm about to receive. So those are the things that I'm waiting for. And once they're done, those emails will be out of here. Now let's go to my second collection tool, which is a notes app. It synchronizes between my phone and my laptop, so it's quite convenient. And there's just one thing that I would like to say before I go through these is that usually I'm a paper planner person and I use my paper planner every single day. But this year I really, I ran out of uh, pages. It was my mistake to order a planner with such a limited number of pages. So I still use it for weeklies, but I don't have any scratch paper in it left. And that is why most of my notes and ideas go into my notes and then I put them into my weekly spread as a calendar to my paper planner. So here we also have to do and in my to-do, I have three projects at the moment. One is thesis. So these were the next physical actions, yeah? So the first one was select a topic. Then I ticked it. Then confirm topic with professor. Then talk to my classmate about the topic because we're writing thesis together. Then writing research questions and so on and so forth. So right now, my next physical action is to find 20 relevant articles. After I do that, I will write down my next physical action because that would depend on my meeting with um, my classmate with whom I'm writing my thesis. So that is the example of a project. Then every week when I do my planning and my paper planner, I would write down, for example, this one. This one is planned for Sunday. So I have it written down in my paper planner. So I don't have to check this every single day. This is a brain dump, a collection tool of all of my tasks. Then the next project here, <laughs> very simple, only has two steps, but still it's considered to be a project. And probably those two tasks will happen on different days. Because first I need to buy screws for the door of my uh, wardrobe. And that can happen on certain evenings or on the weekends. And fixing the door, I probably will not fix the door in the evening because it might be noisy. So that is why it's a project and it's here. And then again, I put this one in my calendar and I put another one in my calendar. And the last project that I have here, I only have three for now, is the cleanup. I really want to clean um, all of my files. So I have Notion that I use occasionally that I want to clean. I have uh, the, the, the diary and I have some Google Drive files. So this is my uh, cleanup plan and I occasionally do it. So far I've cleaned up my Trello and my phone and also my notes. So this I can tick. Those are not urgent tasks. Those are more like one day maybes, but because it's a project, it's here in my to-dos. Then I have some day maybe, and you can see the example. I wrote this down ages ago. I've already read this book. I gave it five stars. We were somewhere in, in Metro, so I think that's why I didn't add it to my Goodreads straight away and wrote it down here. Devil's Valley, yeah, I've read that already. Then someday maybe things that I want to buy, the recipe of a 
Peruvian dish, I believe, that I really want to look up, and then just some ideas for my videos. So all of this is someday maybe I check it occasionally once a week and see if there is something I can add to my calendar. Then I have a reference, I will not show it to you because it has a lot of personal information and addresses and so on, but it has like a lot of things that I need for the reference, usually temporarily. So for example, in the office where I do my internship, we have this system where we have, um, what is it called, floating desk? When you don't have a desk assigned to you, so you have to book a desk because sometimes you're working from home. So for example, that information is also in the reference. So I know which... Uh, desks I booked for next week for example or different addresses phone numbers some personal information that I need to fill in so I can just uh, quickly open notes and copy it and paste it so something like that it's all in my reference I have some other notes that you can see but they're just random for example I have shopping list this is not the part of a GTD system but it's just convenient to have a shopping list here and my planner works exactly the same I if I have something if something comes up I just write it down there in my to-do list if it's a someday maybe thing it would usually go into the notes or it would go on a sticky note that I would put on a page and then some day during that week that will happen. But this is more like a long-term situation. And this is basically it. I'm planning to do another video very soon, the plan with me video, where I want to film how I plan my week and every single day of the week using GTD system and some other frameworks. I think it might be useful for a lot of my subscribers, but also for myself, because I often find myself in a situation, to be honest, when I kind of lost the track of what I'm doing, and I just need this video reminder for myself of how to come back to that kind of productivity mode. So let me know in the comments if you've used GTD, what do you think about it? Do you find it useful? Do you find it unnecessarily complex? Let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching.